there are dragons in space. I repeat, there are dragons in space. I mean, seriously, why do you think that astronauts wear such fancy suits of armor that protect against the cold and the heat so well? You can believe what you want, but believe you me, dragons live in space and they are not happy campers. Today's dragon is this xenophobic and rather territorial creature introduced with the release of Spelljammer. It has a, oh, how to put this, an interesting choice in nesting grounds. Its prime real estate options include swaths of open and barren land, asteroids devoid of life or air, or even bigger targets like celestial bodies such as rocky satellites or, you know, the moon. Yep, that's right, there's dragons on the moon. So even if you're looking at this CR-13 dragon for the very first time, don't you worry your pretty little head, because I'll cover everything from its skills and attacks all the way to its flavor and health, just like I do with every dragon in the TPK of Bus series. The video series where I analyze and rate all the adult dragons of 5th edition by divulging all of their combat potential off their 5th edition sheet and rate them between lethal team party killers and dragons who are just a total bust. And to keep this party train moving, and not to alert the authorities about any highly classified information I may be leaking about dragons on the moon, today's video is TPK or Bust, the adult lunar dragon. First and for a little context, Spelljammer is actually the D&D in space expansion that I can't help but feel disappointed that I actually pre-ordered. But unlike my disappointment for the purchase, this dragon actually had me pretty excited to have invested into. Because the Lunar Dragon's offensive category starts out pretty unique from other dragons, with a cold breath attack that brings a very on-theme secondary effect. For those of you with eyes, you can see this 5-6 to six recharge breath attack is actually lacking significantly in the damage department. We're looking at a 60-foot cone that does 36 points of cold. But the real kicker is actually just failing the saving throw because this breath attack reduces the target's speed to a whopping zero on a failure, freezing them in place. Now this kind of effect is exactly what I'm asking for on breath attacks and other magical phenomena, because well, honestly, to be a dragon of legend, you gotta be kind of legendary. Uh, but I digress. In addition, the Lunar Dragon has a 42 damage wombo combo, uh, five points lower than the White Dragon's Wombo Combo, one point lower than the Brass Wombo Combo, and even worse when you compare it to other CR-13 creatures like the Storm Giants, or the Nafilshin... Na Nafil... This one. Now, Feshni. Now, normally I do avoid talking about the tail attack in particular. Many dragons have it, many dragons have the same effect, but the Lunar Dragon actually gets an additional plus three to hit on its tail attack. I don't know why, but that's actually pretty cool to me. I kind of like that. Its other attacking options are really only its legendary action options, and even those aren't that great. It has two rather than three legendary action points, and for one legendary action point, it gets to do a tail attack. Pretty solid, but for all of its two points, it can instead use the treacherous ice feature, making a 20-foot radius of ice become difficult terrain for any creature other than a lunar dragon, which is kind of strange that they worded it that way, but hey, more power to them. Look, the lunar dragon's overall damage is surprisingly low, and its offensive skills are just fine, I guess. I mean, slowing and full-stopping members of any group is phenomenal, sure, but the likelihood of it being able to fully utilize every part of its kit is the main issue. Being inside a moon or an airless area means that spellcasters have to be involved, and with spellcasters, you get spells. Duh. Generally, I can't imagine movement negation and low damage output being a problem for spellcasters. And without burst damage options to actually kill the passengers, it's gonna need to be in combat for so long, how many turns are these people gonna be there to actually counterattack and find something effective against the dragon? And to be fair, I am assuming a couple things here. That's because I'm unsure of its official combat tactics. You can thank Wizards of the Coast for giving us like one third of a page for both its lower information and its combat information in Boo's Astral Menagerie. 
But with reliable wisdom and an average intelligence, my observation is that this creature fights on pure destructive instinct rather than complex battle plans. It uses brute force and reach to hopefully bully players into a you can't hit me back type of strategy. It should and might only trade HP with ranged targets and nearly always ignore any melee combat with reach to hit it back. It takes what it wants with brute force, and it stalls movement long enough to get away with it. And giving the Lunar Dragon a very strained 4.1 out of 10 for offense isn't really a joke here. Sure, it has everything in its toolkit to, albeit a bit slowly, actually finish the job. That's only considering if everything keeps going its way. Because low damage and a lack of offensive options really do hold this dragon back. Speaking of things that Wizards of the Coast held back on, the stats are another problem. It has 23 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 20 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 13 Wisdom, and 15 Charisma. Now, I hate to be picky on the specifics here, but its overall statistics do not look good for a dragon of its CR. Now, it could be much worse. It could be a white dragon. But honestly, a total of 93 makes it extremely weak overall. A reference point is that the Crystal Dragon, which is one CR lower, has a base total of 106. The Emerald Dragon, which is CR 14, is 108. Brass at CR 13 has 98. White at CR 13 has 86. And the Lunar Dragon at CR 13 has 93, a very stark difference between some of these. And in particular, its Wisdom and Dexterity being so relatively low, and its total saving throw bonuses on Wisdom only being plus 6, makes me confident in saying that this dragon is lacking in magical defense. Not to mention, any of its other skills and saving throws end up being lower and lower due to a total lack of points in all of its stats. All of positive stats is a good thing for most creatures, sure, but we're talking about a dragon here, a creature of legend. A single point of wisdom or charisma missing can be the difference between being polymorphed into an ant or actually killing the spellcaster. Stealth is one of the things that many dragons have, but a plus 11 in stealth makes this dragon more stealthy on average, and I actually like that a lot. It allows the idea of a really good opening move to be more viable to me. Disappointingly though, its only other skill is in perception, and it has the dragon lacking in a variety of skills and options to protect itself in combat, or to even give itself a meaningful advantage, which is kind of sad. It's also worth pointing out it doesn't actually speak common, it only speaks draconic. This means that if the party is talking about a plan or an action to do, like, go grab the water, the dragon won't be able to follow up on it. It won't understand that command. Now, not saying that you should or would do this. It's kind of metagaming in a sense. But it's just worth noting that some dragons could actually use that to their advantage by speaking and understanding common. And this dragon does not have the ability to. On a side note, its passive perception, regardless of the lower than average wisdom, is still 21, which is very, very observant for a dragon of this CR. It makes it pretty good against stealth and trickery. Uh, strangely enough, the dragon trades in blindsight, which nearly every other dragon gets, for an extra 120 feet of dark vision, giving it a grand total of 240 feet of the stuff. A excessive amount that's not very necessary. You're trading in one of the best perception abilities in the game for longer sight vision. Like, I don't understand why they would do this or why this is strong, but I suppose, and this is a, this is a long stretch here, I suppose it could be good if it tunneled like really far away and made like a long tunnel Tunnel and it, it's like 240 feet exactly, but with with 10 intelligence, like, it, how is it gonna use that more effectively? Like, I just don't get it. <sighs> but even if it did burrow inside of its lair and make these traps and everything, it doesn't actually get any layer actions, which is completely disappointing. They had a great opportunity here to make a dragon have a very interesting layer action on the moon of all things. Like, come on, wizards. <sighs> but, with everything covered and plenty to gripe about, I would say giving the Lunar Dragon a very subpar 2.0 out of 10 here for skills 
may not actually be low enough. The only redeeming qualities for me have been the stealth and the burrow. For defenses, this dragon is already off to a bad start with the skills segment, and it pulls up to the party with 172 max health, the exact same amount as the brass dragon, and that does not persuade me to score it any higher here. <laughs> and with a more frail AC of 17, again, 17 is very high AC, generally speaking, but for a dragon, it's lower than other CR 13 dragons like white or brass. It's two saving throw proficiencies really try to pull more weight than they can because of how low its stats are. It's not giving me much hope overall. On top of two legendary resistances a day, rather than three, this is a terrible loadout for a moon dragon. Like, what is happening here? Its only saving grace is the phase ability it gets three times a day, and it can use this as a bonus action, something I really like. The dragon becomes semi-solid and gains resistance to all forms of bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing until it loses concentration on this ability. One of the strengths of this is that constitution is one of the highest scores of this dragon, and it's going to be hard for it to fail a concentration saving throw, but it's lower than average AC means that it's going to get hit more often, which means it's going to have to make a con save way more often, making this ability sort of confusing. Because so far, we have a frail, soft-skinned, reach-spamming, movement-debilitating, half-damage-taking, cold-immune, evil dragon here. <sighs> okay, okay, so here's what I'm thinking in total. With a lower AC of 17, and a subsequently required constitution saving throw every hit to maintain phasing, I can't imagine bursting the dragon down past FHP to be that hard. Uh, to be honest, half damage on nearly everything or not, staying in combat longer and longer, like it will probably end up doing, doesn't actually do anything for it. It has no follow-up here. Not to mention, its stats being overall very shallow and its skills not protecting or enabling it makes the Lunar Dragon's defensive options more and more limited. Its best features for reducing damage happen to be burrowing into solid stone, which it can't do while it's fighting a ship in the air. Spelljammer ships fly, after all. Its powerful phasing ability does make it take half damage, but that's only from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. It does not count for magical damage, and it also is required to make a concentration check every time it's hit. And lastly, its ability to disable player movement happens to be a roll of the dice, making it awkward. But in addition to that, the useful targets it would normally want to hit with this may not even be a threat to it after all since it flies. So with that stated, I have to say a 3.9 out of 10 for defense is brutally honest, but no further discussion needed. And lastly, flavor, the oh-so-wonderful flavor section. First, let's talk about the physical design of this dragon. It's pretty neat. I like the rock-like formations all over its spine, the pale white shading choices, and the terrain it chooses as home. And although there isn't that much for real lower or information to discuss, thanks wizards, it is worth talking about the things that the book didn't say, like its treasure and its interests. It collects treasure, sure, it, it is a dragon after all, but it's not the treasure it wants, in fact it is the act of taking something valuable that it enjoys. It is the brute force of taking something valuable that it craves commonly stealing the helm from spelljammer ships, and to me that's a very interesting way to design a horde. It also makes the dragon far more picky on what it might choose as part of its horde. It may choose something that is more intrinsically valuable to a person, rather than something physically valuable. And I like that a lot actually, that's pretty cool! Not to mention, these dragons are exceedingly territorial. I'm talking like, an entire moon is its territory. If you go anywhere near that moon, you are instantly claws on sight. It's like on sight right there. It's kind of crazy how weak this dragon is physically and how like territorial it is. It reminds me of like the Chihuahua of dragons. <laughs> and I think a grand entrance for this dragon is extremely appropriate regardless of it not having frightful presence. I think it would make a big spectacle out of itself. I think it would be intimidating even if it doesn't have, like, natural intimidation. I gotta say, I really like this dragon. There isn't much there to play off of, sure, but what we got is pretty good. 
So thinking about it all, and enjoying the physical design and all the, the fun little things involved, but also disliking how little there is to actually enjoy, a 5.0 out of 10 for this dragon will be my take on a flavorful and wonderful addition to the 5th edition roster. Look, the Lunar Dragon is pretty rare all things considered. It's xenophobic and relatively antisocial, but its animalistic nature and fun theme really breathe life into this cold, cold monster. Because of that, we finally arrive at the total rating, the end-all be-all of these videos, determining what this dragon's true value is at the table. And it was all over the place today. It has unique abilities, new features, new flavors, and funny failures alike. Although flavor alone cannot save this dragon's score, because the Lunar Dragon is the first one to rank as a total bust with a 3.8 out of 10. To be honest, just a little bit of something like extra skills, spells, more stats would easily make this thing comparable to like brass or even white as a dragon, but as we're looking at it right now, it's not that impressive. Uh, to be honest, it should lower the CR. I think half of the CR is because it's on the moon, and the moon is just a difficult place to fight. It has no air, low gravity, and if there's a dragon out there, like, it's just, it's interesting, but it's not well put together in my eyes. But don't get me wrong, I love this thing. I think this dragon's phenomenally designed. And I don't mind it being so weak, either. I think it's really great to have a weak dragon in the game. A, a reference point, a stepping stone, to compare other dragons to. Because I believe dragons can be weaker and stronger. A great variety is needed to get the full picture. But if you wanted to make this dragon a threat, give it some damage. Oh my gosh, just buff up the damage of this dragon, and this thing's actually a menace and you'd be off to the races. And before you go, just remember that we didn't go to the moon over vanity or pride. We just had neighbors who didn't want to share the space. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hilariously, the Lunar Dragon wasn't even on my radar until after I wrapped up the entirety of the Gold Dragon video. Sure, I knew about its existence, uh, but I had never spent time reading about it or learning about it online. All I knew was, Moon Dragon, haha, <laughs> funny. But if you liked learning about this dragon, like I did, and enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and like and share it all around. I wanted to thank you all for the support that you've given me and all the love, and I'll see you next time, and safe travels. Bye!